Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a few exercises here I'm going to run through which are based on using a graph to control dimensions and make something variable. So in this case I have created a sketch which is a, a graph and it's controlling dimensions of circles in this boundary surface up here. And the beauty of this is if you use Instant 3D you get in instant feedback. On what's going on. Okay, so basically the graph is a just a way to uh, map a, uh, along the X have a number of segments and those segments go up and they meet a spline and then that spline depending on how you manipulate the spline changes the length of those segments and then using um, variables can assign a name to the length of each of these and then assign that variable to these circles so yeah it's quite a it's a visual way of making a graph so you can see what's going on with the spline i want to get that sort of curvature along the length of this this surface so there's probably ways to do it in excel etc but i don't know if they'd be quite as real time as being able to just drag around a sketch here and see the geometry update so I'm going to just run through quickly how this works. So let's roll back. So I have this graph, this graph control. So if I go in here, so I have a dimension on one end, three millimeters. That's my sort of starting diameter. And on the other end, I've got 30 millimeters. And then I have a line along the bottom and the line along the bottom has been divided. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points along there using the tool, sketch tools, segment tool. So if you do that, it will ask you how many segments you want to divide that line into and it'll just keep it, it'll update, um, keep it, keep those equidistant along that line. Um, I've just got a nominal number, 100 millimeters as my X and then I have a spline, a style spline, dimensioned. So I can change these values and these lines get longer and shorter. Okay, that's pretty much how it is. This dimension here is just to push it away from the center of the action. Okay, and then I've got another sketch on top of that, just called reference values. And if you go in there, I've just converted entities of those, those lines and then put a um, driven dimension which is just a way of me capturing that dimension. And then in my equations, I have zero to eight. So being a grasshopper user with your tree starting at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, so I've named those variables. They're capturing that uh, reference value out of that sketch. So now I've created a 3D sketch. So that's basically a, a spline in 3D space, which I can drag around. And then I've created another 3D sketch, which is referencing that first 3D sketch. And I've used the segment tool again. So those are equidistant points. Same amount of points as I have along here. In my, so it, it correlates with that uh, spline, uh, the graph in the X direction. Then I've created planes through all of those points. Planes through point and perpendicular to the spline then because i'm drawing these are all circles this uh, circular sections there's a problem with in lofts and boundary surfaces where you have your connectors and they twist so you can end up with a twist in these um sections so to get around that what i've done is created a a loft here as you can see that loft is controlled by a couple of um, sketches on each end with an angle so I can create a twist and then in each of these sketches they have a line so I've got an intersection curve with this ribbon I created and of in, in all cases they go down to the bottom and they're coincident with the circle and the dimension here is controlled by uh, my global variable so in this case that will be that's one, zero, that is one. That's controlled by variable one. Okay. And then boundary surface. So the boundary surface, in each case here, I have connectors. 
So you can see all the green connectors around the bottom. It controls the twist. See what happens if you start getting this sort of thing going when you don't want that happening. So these, when they go black, they've, they've clipped onto a reference. So in this case, they've clipped onto that vertical line, the end point of it that I've put in each of the sections. Simple as that, eh? Um, <laughs> right, so what you can do with the graph, let's make this 80 degrees. So there you can see it's uh, fairly skinny and then it flares out at the end like a trumpet, exactly like this section here. Obviously there's an, some interpolation going on between the sections. I can change the beginning dimension in my geometry updates. I can change the other end in the geometry updates. In the angle so it's quite useful this is emulating a feature in wildfire and ptc wildfire that i used to use the graph eval so yeah just a way to do it in solidworks i'm just going to go and jump over and show another example okay so this is a video i made the other day this is the sort of setup i made a video showing how to make a variable offset surface so in this case i'm going to use a graph to control uh, the offset. So here's my graph set up in a similar way to the variable pipe. So we're just going to my graph control here. Again, same thing. You can see the surface updating there. If I change the angle, it's going to run off a lot more sort of tangentially to the to the base surface, or I could make it launch up higher much quicker and on the other end make it sort of square on this end or make it ramp up quite a lot to suddenly change so just it's, it's kind of useful if you've got something and you need to tweak um, values and you don't want to go in and tweak things manually and end up with sort of lumpiness. So in this case, it's, it's a variation of the uh, offset surface uh, video that I made the other day. So I've got a, like a target thickness surface. So I've, I've divided one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need seven surfaces between the base surface and this top surface. So I've got all these offsets in here, which I'll bring up, show you those. Okay, so those offsets there, the offset surface is controlled again by measuring this dimension here on each of these nodes and then feeding that dimension into a, into a global variable and then doing some various things in here and I've got to divide by 100 uh, because I've got my graph at 100 by 100 so I've got to, I've got to figure that out into the, into the um, domain that I'm working in. Okay so you can see those offset surfaces there if I go and change this graph control you can see the you can see the offsets changing and the spacing changing between them. Okay so once I've got the offsets there I need to create a face curve on each of them and to make the face curve in this case I've made the face curve not as a percentage ratio but I've used a when you make a face curve you have an option to clip it onto a reference so I've made some references I've made a 3d sketch which is this one and I've made equal a number of uh, lines that are equal in length and each time they go up one level up to the next offset surface right up to the other end here so that these vertices here are going to be my references for my face curves I hope this makes sense so if you go insert 3d sketch and you pick on a surface like that one you go tools sketch tools face curves so I want to pick a the 
the blue direction. And in my other video making a variable uh, offset surface, I used position. But in this case, um, I'm not going to use position, we'll use mesh, and then I'm going to pick a reference. So the reference is going to be that vertice there. So you can see there, creating a face curve, extracting the isopalm at that position. So that's quite a good way to, so that means I don't have to go in and type in these numbers uh, manually. So I'll just hide all these offsets, and then I can show you the face curves. And then to build the boundary surface, it's just a, it's just a, a matter of selecting the end edge of the base surface and then going along and picking each one of these face curves as they go up in height and then picking the end of our edge of the, the target height surface and that's made the um, variable surface okay so with the graph again if i want to change this one's controlled like the target thickness i've controlled in here so Five millimeters hit update this will update and all the all the dimensions will update to suit um, being proportional yeah so there you go so that's using a graph uh, to create variable dimensions or variable offsets or some sort of variation in a design okay that's enough for me now thanks for watching andrew jackson aj design studio bye